what is common between ghalib and the theory of infinite sets yo have a look at this this is just me writing that my name is arjun but how did i get here well let me introduce you to something that i believe is one of the most significant parts of my life right now the nastaliq script which is the calligraphic font of the urdu language now how did i reach here why nastaliq let me take you back to june 2018 dazzling lights elaborate costumes elaborate sets my family and i were waiting in the auditorium waiting for mughle azam to begin and no not the mughle azam which you reminisce about being in black and white but the one which was recently adapted as a musical at ncpa in mumbai wow certain stories stick with people either for the plot or the message this was one of those stories except it stuck with me for a very peculiar reason the language now being an unusually great bollywood lover urdu dialogues were never too unknown for me but this was the first time i was watching something which was fully scripted in urdu and that set the train running and i started thinking of every single indication that was telling me to learn urdu well so why urdu and why would a teenager just get up one day and decide to learn the art of reading and writing it let me tell you urdu is actually all around us at least in mumbai yes it is every single day as i went to school on my school bus and as the bus passed by my locality i saw that there were urdu signboards everywhere on top of restaurants shops banners billboards and all along there was only one question that plagued me what does it feel like to be in your own country in your own city and not be able to read the language on these boards every single time i picked up a piece of hindi literature i realized that the sporadic urdu vocabulary actually gave me an outlet to imagine to grow for my love to grow now it had been a long time since i had learned a language since english hindi and marathi are native to me you must be wondering what this nastaliq is that i keep talking about it is the same script which if i show to my friends today they would say oh the one that looks like arabic and they're not wrong nastaliq is the persian arabic form of writing urdu and persian or farsi it is the same script which was used in the courts of mughal emperors the ones we studied in history now let me tell you three things There are three reasons why I fell in love with Nastaliq and why you should do. First, where do you find a language with such magnificent calligraphic strokes? Second, where do you find a script which goes from right to left when the whole world is accustomed to the left to right way of reading and writing? And third, my personal favorite, where do you find a language which has etiquette, decency, respect embedded in it? nazakat as a native would say so that actually set the ball running and i started thinking of math learning and language learning as a concept going one step behind let me talk about the concept of multilingualism something which has always intrigued me basically i kept thinking about how the brain can quickly switch between different languages between math and a language how these neural connections actually adapt to the varying syntax vocabulary punctuation grammar and that's when i realized like the mad scientist in a movie what better subject to experiment on than yourself and therefore i have five observations for you these five observations have broadened my perspective and hopefully will do the same for you coming to number 1 Let me start with my journey learning Nastaliq. Obviously the first challenge was getting used to the right to left way of reading and writing it. At first it seemed uneasy. The space felt limited. Everything seemed like it was upside down. 
and that's when I realized, oh God, my brain is really challenging me right from the outset. And then I realized, isn't this like something else we do in math? Working backwards, reverse engineering. That's right. Reverse engineering, a technique which we use in math so often. Think about that inverse function which you had to find or that geometry MCQ which you had to solve. Working backwards is everywhere. Well, as recent as the induction inequality which I had to prove in my test was something I worked out backwards. So isn't math learning somehow connected to Urdu learning or any language learning? Well, time for number two. Since we're anyway on this topic, let me tell you about Urdu letters and the Urdu alphabet as used in Nastalik. Urdu words are written as one continuous stroke where the writer does not have to lift his hand. Unlike other languages, there are no spaces between letters. Hence, isn't this very interesting? Add a pinch of complexity to this and then you get a script where each letter looks different whether it's placed in the start, in the middle or at the end of a word. Quite complex yet interesting for me. Another interesting aspect actually is the pronunciation. You must be knowing that these Urdu pronunciations are quite popular are even daunting for, for Hindi speakers considering they have Arabic roots. Now, it would not be uncommon for someone to walk into my room at 2 a.m. in the morning and hear me enunciating my g, g, g and g. I mean, quite an experience. This is primarily due to the guttural articulation or from the epiglottis, as you say. Since we're already on this topic, let me pose one more fun fact in front of you. In the Nastalik script, there are four different letters, all making the Z sound. Three different letters, all making the S sound. And two different letters making the T sound. So in such a scenario, how does one know which one to use where? How to spell a word? The answer is there is no way. It's all about getting used to the patterns and knowing which letter comes where in a word. So do you see a link yet? Yes, math for me is a language of patterns. An I for math patterns is needed just like an I for nostalgic patterns is needed. Think of the first conjecture which was formed. Think of maybe an Olympiad problem which you had to generalize. Think about that progression which you thought, oh, this looks like an arithmetic progression to me. It's all about patterns and patterns actually link my love for math learning and language learning. Well. It's time for number three. Since we're already on the topic of alphabets and letters, hear this out. The nastalik form of writing Urdu conveniently omits the short vowels and considers them implied for readers. Heavy statement, I know. Let me break this down with an English analogy. Suppose you were writing the word biscuit. If you were writing in nastalik, you would write B S C T and leave it for your readers to interpret whether it's buskut or buskit or buskut or buskat, anything. This has happened to me. Whenever I read Urdu in Nastalik, I have to quickly put in an O, E or U and check which one makes sense. As long as I sound like, say, a normal human being and not an alien invading the earth, then, oh, good, I have a right word. And this brings me to trial and error, a very important concept and technique in mathematics. It's all about trial and error, right? Think about that number theory question in which you have that last co-prime integer pair. Or think about that Diophantine equation which you had to solve in an MCQ. It's all about trial and error. If it fits well, then you're at it, great. If it doesn't, you need to try different combinations. Math learning, Urdu learning, you see what I'm getting at, right? Now time for number four. Let me talk about the construct of grammar. Hindi-Urdu grammar is so popular worldwide. It's world-renowned. Grammarians call it to be complicated, refined, elegant. Why? Because there are so many verbs in Hindi and Urdu which have connotative meaning. 
you have to string together these conjunctions, prepositions, nouns, verbs, and it's all in the brain. I would like to give you an example. In the 10th grade, my Hindi teacher used to tell me, suppose X is a synonym for Y. That does not mean that a sentence with X would also work with Y. Quite baffling, but that's Hindi and Urdu grammar in a nutshell. What is this like? Is it something like we've encountered in mathematics? That's right, the art of proof writing. Writing proofs for me is like grammar. You need to figure out how these numbers, symbols, all come together in an elegant structure. Once you have that, you have a good proof. Therefore, I always say that for someone to be good at writing proofs, you need to have that grammatical prowess. You need to know how to fit in your corollaries, lemmas, theorems, propositions to make an elegant proof. Hence, math learning is again like language learning. Now, that was a lot of information. But behold number five. I will now come to the literature aspect of Urdu. Urdu literature is world-renowned as we all know. The ghazals, the poems, the short stories. Everyone knows them. Take Ghalib for example. Mirza Ghalib, the revolutionary Urdu writer. Now, I just pick up one ghazal from him. One share, one couplet. And you will see that there's so much ambiguity and so much abstractness in it. The depth of that is capable of drowning a hundred humans. Therefore, when I read a ghazal, I'm always thinking, um, okay, is this a cry for help? Is this an expression of love? Is this an expression of jealousy? Is it a call to my beloved? And all of them will make sense at the same time. Hence, what I am saying is that this ambiguity, this abstractness is also seen in the world of pure math. Think of that abelian group, a ring, a field, Everything in pure math, Cantor's set theory, even understanding infinite sets, it's all about embracing the ambiguity, embracing the enigma, and then realizing the abstract nature of it. Therefore, I always say that math learning is like Urdu learning even in this aspect. And I hope that question which I asked you in the beginning, what connects Ghalib and the theory of infinite sets? That has been answered till now. But coming to the main point, what do I want to drive through this talk? What do I want to tell you about? When research in neuroplasticity is so trending, it is seen that the neural connections which are involved in learning language, learning syntax, grammar, vocabulary, is similar to the neural connection which is involved in learning mathematics. Just as you code switch between English to Hindi to Marathi, in the same way, you code switch to English and mathematics as well. Because English and mathematics are both languages to me. Languages of patterns, just like Urdu and Nastalik is. So, what has this done for me? Urdu learning, learning Nastalik, has actually opened up so much for me. It has opened up new literature for me, past mysteries, the rich cultural heritage. It has shown me all that. Math learning has shown me a whole new world of numbers. I look at the world differently today. Therefore, when I learn both simultaneously, I realize that Urdu learning was just like math learning for me. So what is in it for you? We have often segregated the STEM fields and the linguistic fields. But what about the magic that lies in between? What about the wonders that float between STEM learning and language learning? I consider it to be a symbiotic relationship. One is incomplete without the other. And I think it's high time you should too. Think of language learning. It's just like you're learning a math topic. Or think of math learning. It's just like you're learning nastali. So the point that I'm trying to drive here again is that if you feel you want to learn a language, go ahead. Don't think about it. The opportunities are there, your resources are out there. All you need to do is make a decision. Hesitance, that is good. Being reluctant, that is good. If you have any sort of hesitation, it only means that you will be able to appreciate the wonders at the end of it better. Therefore, don't be scared. Today, 
go sign up today learn a new language learn a new math topic it's all i want to tell you when you start learning the languages you will realize that you will understand numbers better when you start learning mathematics you will realize that not only have you opened up a new avenue for language learning but you've also opened up a treasure trove of li rich literature therefore i always tell you that once you learn a language once you learn mathematics just like learning nastaliq for me was i was anyway passionate about mathematics but when i learned nastaliq i realized that the streets which i travel weren't the same anymore you will also realize that the streets which you traverse every day will not be the same for you the lens with which you view the world is not going to be the same i can assure you of the fact that the world is going to turn and make a full 360 degree turn for you every single aspect of life is going to be different and the day won't be long when ghalib in your imagination explains the schroder bernstein theorem and a euclidean algorithm flows like the lines of a ghazal every step of the way thank you